Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Salalipop and this is the brand new Yadia Elite Prime electric scooter. This is a huge electric scooter designed for adults with this massive base for extra foot room, higher ground clearance, some nice design touches like turn signals, and a really cool looking asymmetrical full suspension design to make it more comfortable and more capable. In this video, we're going to go over all of the details and specifications on the scooter, including the unboxing and assembly process, getting the official weight, and at the end of the video, I'll give it a nice test ride so I can let you know if this is a good value scooter for the money. So for some more highlights, the Elite Prime has a 1,500 peak watt motor and a top speed of 18.6 miles per hour. So Overall, it offers a lot of good features, and the retail price of the scooter is $1,499 US dollars, which is definitely pretty up there in price, so I'll consider that in my review. But I did ask this company for a discount code, and they provided one, so use the code TALOLIPOP200 to get $200 off the scooter on the Yadio website, which I'll link in the description below. It's also available and on sale on Amazon currently, so you can also get a deal there. And actually on that note, this is a pre-production model of the scooter that this company sent me so I could check it out and review it for you guys and let you know if it's worth the money before it actually officially comes out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but that being said, some slight things may still change before the official production. The company overall seems to be reliable as well. They've been in the business for over 20 years and have made electric scooters, e-bikes, and electric motorcycles. So this definitely isn't a rookie product for them. All right, so I've given you some good highlights on the scooter, but now it's time to talk about the unboxing and assembly process. So this is actually super simple. Anyone can do this. You just open up the box and inside you'll find some useful owner's manuals, some screws for the assembly, a decent multi-tool, a valve extender so you can pump up the tires more easily, a nice hard shell carrying case for your items, and my favorite part, this really well-designed charger that is color matched to the scooter and has a nice orange strap, so I really like that detail for sure. For the actual assembly, you pull out the scooter, push up the main stem, connect a cable inside the handlebar to a cable in the stem, slide the handlebar on, bolt it in place, and that's pretty much it. I went ahead and adjusted the brakes a little bit as well since I know how to do that and they were a little less strong than I'd want them to be, but it's not necessary to do that if you don't want to. One thing to note here is that they do recommend you use the Yadia smartphone app to set up the scooter. So you plug the nice magnetic charger into the scooter and you can go into the app and connect to it, which is fairly easy and quick. On the app, you can control some functions that you otherwise would not be able to access on the scooter, like updating the firmware or turning on the energy recovery mode to increase range. Luckily, you don't have to use the app if you don't want to. It's just an added bonus. All right, but now let's go over all the features, starting with the overall frame and design. So this scooter is made from aluminum. It has a maximum weight payload capacity of 265 pounds, and I weighed it myself on my scale at 64.8 pounds, which is heavier than other smaller and cheaper electric scooters on the market, but Yadia is calling this the SUV of electric scooters, so in that sense, it's more durable and hefty. I do like the design of the scooter. They chose a nice gray color for the body. These orange accents work well. It does look pretty sleek overall. And of course it gives you more space to stand with this seven inch wide base here. Another comfort feature they added is this wider handlebar, which actually slopes down a bit to make it easier on your wrists while riding. And this scooter does fold up to make it more compact, which is really hassle free since all you do is pull down this lever, making sure this black piece uh, is also pulled down and then you can lay the stem back and connect it to the rear of the scooter. It's still heavy to carry around, but doable if you need to transport it short distances. Okay, next let's go over all the tech stuff. So this scooter comes with a 46.8 volt, 14.5 amp hour battery, paired to a pretty powerful 800 watt motor that has a peak of 1,500 watts. This combination allows you to reach a top speed of 18.6 miles per hour, go up a maximum incline grade of 30%, and reach a max range of 40 miles, which is a big range for a scooter, and that makes it pretty good for a daily commuter. And in terms of testing those features, I definitely have gotten the scooter to easily go above 18 miles per hour, and it does go up hills pretty easily as well. Uh, you can watch me make it up some reasonably steep inclines here. They're actually the steepest ones in my area, and the speed does decrease a little bit, but that's expected. So I'd say the Yadi specs are accurate, and this one does climb uphill pretty well. 
The display screen is also nice and integrated into the handlebar, so you turn it on by holding the middle power button, after which you'll see the main speed in the center, what riding mode you are in below that, and the battery life below that. It's super simple and user friendly, so I like this one a lot. You can change riding modes by double clicking that center button, and you can see it goes from walk mode, to drive mode, to sport mode, and to extreme mode. Walk mode basically turns on all the lights to make you more visible, and the speed tops out at about 3.7 miles per hour, while drive mode kicks it up to 9.3 miles per hour, and sport mode goes to the max 18.6 miles per hour. The extreme X mode at the end also tops out at 18.6 miles per hour, but it just accelerates the scooter twice as fast, which is actually a pretty cool mode and honestly pretty fun, so I appreciate that. I also mentioned before that there is an energy recovery mode, so you can change the settings on this through the app, but essentially the scooter does regenerate some of its battery life when it decelerates on the road, which means you can prolong your range while riding if you don't use the brakes as often and instead let the scooter slow down on its own. It's something to get used to, but definitely a cool and efficient feature to have. Back to the screen, you can also single click the power button to turn on the front LED headlight for visibility at night. And on that note, let's move on to the lights. So the rear taillight has this pretty nice triangular design which I think makes the scooter look more modern. And this light is actually always on as a safety feature for cars behind you. And it also functions as a brake light so it gets even brighter when you press the brake lever. And the red light below that is actually just a reflector for added safety. There's one of those reflectors in the front of the scooter as well. The front headlight is actually the only light that turns on when you click the middle button. And this light works for commuting later in the day or at night if you're around multiple street lights. But in complete darkness, I feel like the lights could be a tad brighter for visibility. Besides those lights, we actually have two more in the rear, which are the turn signals. This is an insanely cool feature in my opinion since not all scooters have this. And it's definitely a great safety feature, so I love that. On the left side of the handlebar, there's two separate arrows, and those will be for your left and right turn signals. When you press one of those buttons, that respective turn signal comes on, and it actually beeps to notify people behind you that you are turning. The signal automatically turns off after 10 flashes, which I think is a nice feature since you don't have to worry about turning the signal off, but you can still press the arrow again to stop the turn signal earlier if you want to. And while we're up here, you do also have a nice integrated gray bell for alerting people around you. And for the final tech piece on this scooter, we have a throttle on the right side of the handlebar, which is just a normal thumb throttle that you push down to engage the motor, and it works great. And now it's time to cover those mechanical components, starting with one of the coolest features on the scooter, the front and rear suspension. So the scooter definitely has a unique looking suspension linkage in the front, which actually only attaches to the left side of the wheel here. And that itself looks pretty crazy. And similar story in the back with that asymmetrical linkage on the left side only. You can see how that actually works when I'm pushing down on the scooter here. And while I'm riding it, it definitely does provide a good amount of comfort and smooths out the ride. I've ridden other electric scooters that don't have any suspension and you definitely feel the vibrations. So I'm happy the Elite Prime made it a priority to have some good and unique suspension. But although it has suspension, you still shouldn't be taking this out on hard trails or something. But hey, you can see I pushed it a little bit by hopping some curbs here and there. So I did have a bit of fun with it. And I even went over some dirt and gravel areas and it handles all of this perfectly. So I'd say it's durable enough. Next, we have the brakes. Luckily, Yadia gives you a front and rear brake on this model with a drum brake in the front and a mechanical disc brake in the rear. These brakes definitely stop the scooter well, so I have no concerns or complaints here. They look nice, they function well, and I feel safe with them. And finally, we have the wheels and tires. The tires are more road focused, but are durable enough to withstand potholes and other rough road features. They are tubeless, so no risk of getting a pinch flat there and less risk of getting flats in general. And you do have some fenders on there as well for when it rains outside. And the rims have this nice modern design to them, so I'm definitely happy with these wheels. Okay, but that's basically it for the components. Now it's time for me to get on it and show you what it can do. All right, riding the Yadia Elite Prime. So I have it on walk mode right now. Tops at around three miles per hour, pretty slow. It says four on my iPhone uh, accelerometer there. I'm gonna kick it up to drive. I just got a little app to show the speed on the iPhone so we can kind of test it with what the scooter says to see if it's accurate. So I've been riding it around with this app and it does seem fairly accurate so far. So nine miles per hour on drive is the max right there. 
kick it up to sport mode and it should go straight up to 18, 19 miles per hour. So let's see how it gets up there. All right, 18, 19 on the scooter, 18 on the accelerometer. So pretty close, pretty accurate speed right there. Gonna brake. <laughs> Brakes pretty quickly, which is nice. So yeah, overall, this is a very nice scooter. It definitely feels durable and hefty. You know, you can tell this company put some thought and effort into what it looks like, how it feels and performs on the road. Positives on the scooter, some pros, some things I really like. I do like the sloped handlebars. I do like how wide they are. It feels like, you know, you have more control over turning the scooter, but it's not so wide that it's like very wobbly uh, going straight. So I like that and I like how they slope down so it is a little bit more comfortable than having your hands up here. I haven't ridden too many electric scooters. I did review another one on my channel that was much smaller and less expensive than this one. So this one definitely feels huge compared to that and feels like a much more durable and stable and geared towards adults, which I do like about the scooter. It has some good acceleration. Everything is very smooth about it. There's some vibrations here and there if you're over some really rough patches or especially if you're on the gravel, you do kind of feel it. But it's way better than, than other scooters that don't have suspension or only have front suspension, so I like that. And the battery life is better than other scooters in the range, of course, you know, with a 40 mile range. And obviously that's with not going sport mode the entire time, but that's like a, a max range that you can realistically achieve. Going up a pretty steep incline here now. It's chilling at around 11 miles per hour, which is pretty good uh, for going uphill. You know, I'm not expecting it to go 18 miles per hour going up this steep of a grade here um probably a little bit more than 30 percent here like they advertise regardless of the price point i think it's a great piece of machinery um i think it's very comfortable i think it's smooth i think it's reliable durable pretty much just checks off all the boxes that i would want in a scooter however when you do consider the price point it's 1500 dollars which is very very high in my opinion for a an electric scooter you can get electric bikes for around that amount or less than that amount and that, that makes it a little bit harder to justify spending that much on this scooter i think it's definitely a great scooter and a great product and i think they did a really good job and they probably had to do a lot of research and design to get the scooter to where it is today so if you if you are you know someone who values uniqueness values all of the features i mentioned and the reliability and durability of it regardless of the price point i think this is a great option for me personally I would prefer, I think, having the price point a little bit lower or having a higher top speed because from what I've seen doing my own research on electric scooters here and there, if you are charging over a thousand for an electric scooter, typically those scooters end up going to a top speed of like 40 miles per hour or something crazy like that, which may not have been Yadia's you know, initial focus. They probably don't want the scooter to go that fast because of safety reasons, of course. So maybe they prefer just building something that's very durable, very user-friendly. It just works perfectly as a commuting option uh, since it has that high range and it has that good top speed. But if you do want to purchase one, I would recommend getting it when it's on sale. All right, guys, it's me from the future. Uh, <laughs> I didn't show off X mode on this test ride since I had some trouble unlocking it. But after uh, deleting and reinstalling my app, I was able to unlock the extreme mode on my scooter. And as I mentioned in the video already, it's basically the same thing as the sport mode, but it accelerates twice as fast. So let's do a bit of a test here on camera so I can show you what that looks like. So this is sport mode. So accelerating, you can see it's going up and it feels very gradual, very steady. Okay, now I'm back in the same spot, starting from a standstill on X mode accelerating <laughs> like if you start from a standstill and just push on throttle like the front wheel literally lifts off the ground like a good maybe inch or so so nothing crazy but it's still you can feel it coming up off the ground and it's like a pretty fun feeling it definitely makes it more of a thrilling ride and more fun for sure so i did want to mention that but yeah guys i'll end the video there thank you so much for watching liking and subscribing as always i hope each and every one of you have a great morning today and remember to keep scootering out there. <laughs>